Hello friends, wizards, witches and muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Happy New Year! Today I thought I would start the year off with a video that's a little bit different to usual on this channel because I was sitting in bed the other week and I was looking at my bookshelf in my bedroom which is specifically a bookshelf of books that need to be read by me and I was just like, I don't want them to be on my to read shelf anymore. So I thought I would show you the kind of books that I'm very excited to read. We've got fiction slash novels. We've got autobiographies. We've got mental health books. We've got self-help slash worky books. We've got very special books, which we'll get into later. I cannot wait to tell you about which books that I cannot wait to read in 2023. So let's go. If you're brand new to this channel, hello, welcome. Don't forget that you can click the subscribe button if you'd like to become part of our weird, magical online family. But let's go, because I'm going to tell you about all of these books. Okay, I'm actually going to start off with the pile of books surrounding mental health, because it's an important topic. And these books, I'm very excited to get my claws into. So the first book is this one. This is The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Now I will say, I've had this for about a year and I have read quite a bit of it because this is a book that you don't have to read from cover to cover. You can simply open a page up and then read that page. So I have read quite a few of these pages already. But this year, I think I would quite like to read cover to cover and read every page. But this is a book that you can just dip into whenever you are requiring a little bit of comfort for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. This book isn't just like poems. I mean, there are poems in here, but it's like stories, it's poems, there's recipes, there's playlists, there's quotes. There's just so much to this book and I just think it's a beautiful book and I do recommend this but I do want to read every single word that is between the cover. I love Matt Haig's work. I also highly recommend The Midnight Library which is one of his novels and he's a lovely lovely guy. We follow each other on Instagram so that's nice. So if you have a friend that is in need of a bit of comfort, I have actually bought this for a, a friend of mine when they were having a hard time. It's just it's just a nice gift but it's also a nice book just to dive into when you're having a bit of a moment and a bit of a wobble. So that's my first book to read in 2023 but it's also one that I also recommend. Next up is a book that I bought in 2022 and put it on my shelf and I haven't read it. So this is called Don't F***ing Panic. <laughs> the shit they don't tell you in therapy about anxiety disorder, panic attacks and depression. And this is by Kelsey, I don't want to mispronounce her surname. I think it's Dog, Dorag, Dorag. Either way, Kelsey. Yes, I have anxiety and I am also in therapy. This is a book that I bought before therapy. If you are one of the millions of people struggling to manage your mental health right now, stop whatever you're doing and read this interactive workbook created by comedian and mental health advocate Kelsey something. <laughs> this obviously has things to read but it also has like worksheets and things to actually do which I thought was a really unique thing in a book. I thought it was very cool. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is a book that I'm kind of gonna dip in and out of again because it's not something that you can consume all in one sitting or or get involved in the sheets and the activities in. But either way, I think this is a cool book that's potentially going to be very useful. I've not read it, so I can't fully recommend it, but I do like the idea of it and the concept of it. Anyway, let's move on. This was actually a Christmas present in 2021, I think. This book is called Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before? And it's by Dr. Julie Smith. It's a Times, Sunday Times number one bestseller. And it's everyday tools for life's ups and downs. And I'll just read the blurb on the back. The tools I share in this book are mostly taught in therapy, but they are not therapy skills. They are life skills. Tools that can help every single one of us navigate through difficult times and to flourish. 
When we understand a little bit about how our minds work and we have some guideposts on how to deal with our emotions in a healthy way, we not only build resilience, but we can thrive and grow. Apparently she's a social media superstar and an experienced clinical psychologist. I quite like the idea of this book. Why has nobody told me this before? So cannot wait to read that. Also really like the book design of that. Right, the fourth and final book that I'm putting under the category of mental health is a lovely little book. This, I believe, was his second book by Vex King. It's Healing is the New High by Vex King. I had his first book, I can't remember what it was called, but this is a guide to overcoming emotional turmoil and finding freedom. How can you achieve inner healing, let go of past trauma and find resilience and freedom? Vex King developed inner healing techniques to help him find freedom from his troubled past and heal his emotional pain and trauma. Since then, he's helped hundreds of thousands of people to move forward on their own healing journey. Vex King is someone that I came across when I was just looking into things like the law of attraction. That's something that I used to be very heavily into, still am into, but haven't really had time to practice it that much over the last year or two, which is something that I definitely want to change. But I really enjoyed Vex's first book and I really wanted to support not only him, but also have a little look at what his second book was about. I gotta say, this book is looks beautiful. Um, it's got it's got some nice illustrations in here as well. Okay, so that is the end of the mental health books that I really want to read in 2023. Let's move on to some autobiographies. And one that has been staring at me all of 2022 is this one. I asked for this for Christmas in 2021 because I listened to the podcast A Diary of a CEO by Stephen Bartlett. Love that podcast. Huge recommendation. And he interviewed Jimmy Carr. Now, I didn't know a lot about Jimmy Carr, except he was a comedian slash TV presenter. And I really loved the episode that Stephen did with Jimmy. And I really wanted to read Jimmy's book. So this is it. It's called Before and Laughter, a life-changing book. Life can be hard, harsh and depressing, but if you've got a light, funny disposition, you're better able to deal with every setback life will inevitably throw at you. With this book, I'm taking the filthy pond water of life and filtering it through the charcoal of humour so that we can all drink it. What the hell does Jimmy Carr know about life? We'll see. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this because you think that all comedians are happy, positive and that kind of thing. Whereas I think this book might actually tell us the opposite, potentially. I'm really excited to read this. So that's the first autobiography that I'm really looking forward to reading. Uh, next up is one that's been in my collection for maybe too long. I've had this for years. More, maybe more than five years, maybe, maybe longer than that. <laughs> you may recognise Lauren Graham as Lorelai Gilmore from The Gilmore Girls. I did start reading this a few years ago, but I couldn't remember it. I couldn't tell you what it was about, so I'm going to read it again. This is called Talking As Fast As I Can. I mean, the main reason that I got bought this was because I'm obsessed with the Gilmore Girls. It's a show that I will rewatch every single year. This book contains some stories from my life. The awkward growing up years, the confused dating years, the fulfilling working years and what it was like to be asked to play one of my favourite characters again. Also included tales of living on a houseboat, meeting guys at award shows and that time that I was asked to be a butt model. All... <laughs> A hint, all three made me seasick. I'm very excited, I'm not gonna lie. I love the actress and I don't know much about her as a person. Obviously I know her character inside out, but I don't know Lauren Graham that well. So I can't wait to read this book because she's awesome, okay? Next up is one that you may have predicted. Tom Felton, Beyond the Wand. I have flicked through this. I may have already read this, 
by the time you're watching this because this is my Christmas read. I'm actually on a break right now whilst you're watching this. I'm on holiday, just at home, hopefully reading, organising, cleaning my house, sorting my garage out. This book is fairly new to the collection because it got sent to me in a PR package from the lovely Tom and his PR team and I'm just excited. There's not many autobiographies from people from Harry Potter. They stood 30 of us in line. One of the adults, I would later find out that this was the director, Chris Columbus, went down the line asking each of us which part of the book we were most excited to see on screen. I remember being underwhelmed by the question. As the responses came, clear and certain, Hagrid, Fang, Quidditch, I remember standing there wondering if I could go home soon. It was only when it came to the turn of the kid next to me that I realised not only had I given the question zero thought, I had absolutely no idea what anybody was talking about. Who was Hagrid? What was a Quidditch? My neighbour announced that he was most excited to see Gringotts and I thought to myself, what the hell are they? Some kind of flying animal maybe? I'm very excited to read this, as I said, might have read this by the point of this video, but it's probably top of my list on autobiographies to read, cannot wait. Next up, let's talk about some special books. These are in my miscellaneous section. This is a book that I bought this year. I don't even know where to start with this one. This book is called S. <laughs> it's a book called S and it's by J.J. Abrams and I've got to tell you about, this isn't just a book, this is an experience. It's a special book. Firstly, let me take it out of the slipcase. Now, this is like a million books in one. So the actual book of this is The Ship of Theseus. So there is a novel. I've got to read this here. I'm not going to explain it well. One book, two readers, a world of mystery, menace and desire. A young woman picks up a book left behind by a stranger. Inside it are his margin notes, which reveal a reader entranced by the story and by its mysterious author. She responds with notes of her own, leaving the book for a stranger, and so begins an unlikely conversation that plunges them both into the unknown. The book, Ship of Theseus, the final novel by a prolific but enigmatic writer, named V.M. Stracker, Stracker? Hmm. in which a man with no past is shanghaied onto a strange ship with a monstrous crew and launched onto a disorientating and perilous journey. Then we have some information about the writer and let's talk about the readers. So the readers, which is the bit that kind of made me want to buy this book to begin with. Jennifer and Eric, a college senior and a disgraced grad student, both facing crucial decisions about who they are, who they might become and how much they're willing to trust another person with their passions, hurts and fears. Right. If you're a bit confused, this book might be a bit, I'm not sure how to start reading it, but we'll find out. So here's the book just looks like a book it's kind of been taken from a library and here it is so book for loan this feels like a prop I'm giving you that now as you can see in this book there are things there are things there are annotations which are written by Jennifer and Eric so not only have you got the actual story of the ship of Theseus you have got a story from two people that have also read this book and you've also got things in the book that have been placed in there by the readers so you've kind of got three stories in one but also props look there's photographs as well that's actually on proper photo paper there's postcards as well oh my god it's just honestly this is probably the book that i'm most excited to dig into and i have read the, the best way to read this book is potentially a chapter at a time by reading the actual story and then going back and reading all the notes on it and I think that might be the way that I want to read it. I've never seen or heard of a book like this so that's what I'm saying this book isn't just a book 
this is an experience. So yeah, there we have it. I will link that down below for you guys. Next up is a book that a lot of you guys have probably seen already. You've definitely seen it if you've watched my recent favourites video because I mentioned that I wanted to read it cover to cover. I have flicked through. I do recommend this if you are a fan of the graphic designers. This book is The Magic of Mina Lima. They both are incredible. Eduardo and Mira Four. It says celebrating the graphic design studio behind the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films. It's signed. You could, I think you can probably still buy the signed versions online, but look at this. Goes through everything that they've designed in the movies and explains it all. And honestly, it starts from the very first time that they were asked to uh, design for them like it's just very cool so that's a book that is going to be read this year this is probably one of the easier ones to read can't wait I think that's going to be lovely oh okay I think next I'm gonna move on to I don't know what theme this is kind of like workbook slash self-helpy books and I'm gonna start with this one this one I have had on my shelf for a while it's by I think she's another influencer you know called Grace Beverly either way it's one that um, I've seen a few people recommend over the last year or two it's called working hard hardly working how to achieve more stress less and feel fulfilled we all know the pressure of feeling like we should be grinding 24 7 while simultaneously being told what we sh that we should just relax and take care of ourselves like we somehow have to decide between success and sanity but in today's complex world, where every hobby can be a hustle and social media is the lens through which we view ourselves and others, this seemingly impossible choice couldn't be further from our reality. A book to help you create your own productivity method, make your own routine for work, um, understand your value and engage in effective self-care. So as someone that has in the past been a self-proclaimed workaholic, and have really struggled with boundaries and that work-life balance. I feel like this book is gonna really resonate with me and I can't wait to read it. I'm looking forward to that. I think this is probably one of the self-help books that I'm most excited to read. Again, it's another book that's been staring at me. I need to make time to read. If any of you guys in the comments are avid readers, let me know where you find the time to read. I mean, I know where I should be finding it, all of the hours that I perhaps scroll TikTok when I shouldn't be, but do you have a reading routine? How'd you get in the reading mood? Next up is a book that my, I think my brother bought for me last Christmas. It says 4,000 weeks and how to use it. I don't know much about this book. Nobody needs telling there isn't enough time. We're obsessed with our lengthening to-do lists, our overfilled inboxes, the struggle against distraction and the sense that our attention spans are shriveling. Still, we rarely make the connection between our daily struggles with time and the ultimate time management problem. The question of how best to use our ridiculously brief time on the planet, which amounts on average to about 4,000 weeks. Four 4,000 Weeks is an uplifting, engrossing and deeply realistic exploration of the challenge, rejecting the futile modern obsession with getting everything done. It introduces readers to tools for constructing a meaningful life by embracing rather than denying our limitations. Well, that sounds like a really interesting read. This is something that I wouldn't mind taking on like a beach holiday or something. I am having a beach holiday this year if it kills me. I've been wanting one for years and I just haven't. All right, on to the fiction books. The first one on my list is one that I had actually started last year via Audible, but I got distracted or I kept falling asleep. So I need to read the physical book, so I bought it. This is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. This is a whole series, guys. This apparently is amazing. And from when I started it, I was like, you know what, this does sound good. I can see it going good places. This is meant to be like the next Harry Potter, but not Harry Potter, if you know what I'm saying. And it's been made into either a TV show or a film. I think it's a TV show. And I need to read the books before it comes out. Okay, look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. I never asked to be the son of a Greek god. I was just a normal kid going to school, playing basketball, skateboarding, the usual, until I accidentally vaporized my maths teacher. Now I spend my time battling monsters and generally trying to stay alive. This is the one where Zeus, god of the sky, thinks I've stolen his lightning bolt and making Zeus very... <laughs> and making Zeus angry is a very bad idea. You can actually see there 
the rest of the uh, Percy Jackson books. So I'm starting with the first one. I'm not buying any of the others until I have read this one. I'm a, I'm a buy one at a time kind of gal. I think this is gonna be the first novel that I really wanna get through. This book here, I was recommended on a TikTok. I find quite a lot of these books through TikToks. The Mirror Visitor, book one, A Winter's Promise. Love the cover. Lose yourself in the fantastic world of the arcs and in company of unforgettable characters in this French runaway hit. A mix of awkward misfit and misunderstood genius, Ophelia cares little about appearances or other people's opinions of her. She possesses two special gifts, a talent for reading the pasts of objects and the ability to travel through mirrors. Her peaceful existence on Anima is interrupted when she is promised in marriage to the Taciturn? Taciturn? Taciturn. Thorn, a member of a powerful clan from a cold and distant arc. I just want to read it. It sounds good. I like, and I think this might be a series as well. Yes, here are a few of the others. There's four in total, I think. Next up, another TikTok recommendation that I've not read yet. This is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I bought this because it was, it was sold to me as the perfect beach holiday read. And I was like, all right, sounds good. It's the day of Nina Rivers' annual end of summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch. Everyone who's anyone wants an invite to catch a glimpse of the famous River siblings, or River siblings. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel, brothers Jay and Hud, one a championship surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored babysitter, Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of legendary singer Mick River. Honestly, sounds cheesy. Sounds a bit rubbish, to be fair, but <laughs> I kind of liked the idea that everyone was going crazy about this book and I don't mind a bit of cheese. I don't mind a bit of cheese. So there we have it. That's going to be my cheesy beach read. <laughs> Next is a book which I think was another Christmas book not so long ago. So this is called Ghosts and it's by Dolly Alderton. My 32nd birthday was the simplest birthday I ever had which was a perfectly lovely way to begin the strange year of my life. Nina Dean has arrived at her early 30s as a successful food writer with her loving friends and family, plus a new home and neighbourhood. When she meets Max, a beguiling romantic hero who tells her on date one that he's going to marry her, it feels like all is going to plan. Um, it sounded like an interesting read, especially for a girl that's in her 30s, you know what I'm saying? So I'm excited about that. The cover's beautiful. It feels really nice. I love the aesthetic of books. I love book design. Right, we've got three books left, but I'm going to talk to you about the next two in one sitting. A Discovery of Witches. Now, I discovered A Discovery of Witches when I worked with Now TV a year or two ago, and I love the series. I am obsessed with the series. It's so good. But we all know that books are better than TV and films. So, I got the first two and I'm gonna read them. They're on my to-do list. So I've got A Discovery of Witches and then I've got A Discovery of Witches Shadow of Night. But let me just read you the blurb of the first one. So it says it begins with absence and desire. It begins with blood and fear. It begins with a discovery of witches. Diana Bishop, a young scholar and descendant of witches, discovers a long lost and enchanted alchemical manuscript deep in Oxford's Bodleian Library. Its reappearance summons a fantastical underworld which she must navigate with a vampire, Matthew Claremont. This manuscript, Ashmole 782, holds the secrets of their past and the key to their future. Honestly, the series is 10 out of 10. So I know that the book's gonna be even better. So I'm ready. She's ready. <laughs> And last but certainly not least in the books that I really want to read in 2023, Dune. I've heard this is amazing and I, I, I don't want to watch the film until I've read the book. This is the book. The cover's gorgeous. 
Before The Matrix, before Star Wars, before Ender's Game and New Romancer, there was Dune, the greatest science fiction novel ever written. The Spice Melange, Melange? is the rarest and most valuable element in the universe. It does everything from increasing a person's lifespan to making interstellar travel possible. And it can only be found on a single planet, the inhospitable desert world Araka Arrakis? Arrakis. It sounds good. And I, I've, I've told it, I've been told it's fantastic. I actually need to sit down and read it. Honestly, you guys, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by the giant pile of books that I have to read. I've got so much to read and I'll be honest with you, I'm terrible at reading. I find it really hard to concentrate. So if anyone has any tips, let a girl know. But yes, these are all the reads. And these are all the reads. But yes, these are all of the books that I really, really want to tackle this year. I think it's doable. I'd like to at least read half. I'd like to read at least one a month. I feel like that's doable, right? It's doable. I'm not going to say that it's a, it's a New Year's resolution because I never keep those. It's just something that I would like to do. So there we have it. These are my books that I need to read in 2023. Have you read any of them? If you have, leave a review down below in the comments and no spoilers. This is a no spoiler zone. <laughs> also, if you have any books that you recommend, please leave the name of them, the genre, and what they're about in a comment. How fun is that? Little book club video. Um, if you enjoyed this video and some of these books excited you, maybe there's some that you're gonna get for yourself, leave a comment down below, give this video a magical thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. I will let you know how I get on with these books, likely via Insta stories, where where I will put updates. So follow me over there. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to read your recommendations of books in the comments down below. Honestly, oh, I'm sad that I have to wait so long. Anyway, <laughs> don't know about you. I've got enough books to be getting on with, so maybe it's for the best. I'll see you guys soon. I hope you've all had a lovely day, whatever you've been up to. And yeah, okay. Oh, better go read. Ooh.